Hello everybody, this is Gamer Tag Your Willy for part two of the first tutorial basic editing in Forge. Now, if you guys have not seen part one, go ahead and click my radar in the very bottom left. And you can go ahead and it'll start you right off at the very beginning of this tutorial. Now, we left off on this incline here, the 2x2 two two steep, but it's like I was saying in the last tutorial, not going the exact angle I wish it to be. Now there's a couple ways I can fix this. The first way is you can hold right trigger and while you're holding right trigger you can use the left and the right stick. The left stick will make you zoom closer and further away from the object if you're pushing forward or back. If you push left or right it's called kinda like skewing so it's kind of like whatever angle you're looking at it, it rotates it that way. Whoop, kind of got stuck on the wall there. See, kind of skews it a little bit. It's not exactly like the angle you're looking at it skews, but it skews kind of at, like if you had a box looking in front of you and you turned it to the left and towards you at the exact same time, it kind of does that kind of movement. The right stick is what you typically use because that makes it move left to right when you're holding left and right and forward pushing and backwards pushing when you push forward and back. So you can use that to kind of get it where you want but you know it's kind of a little hard to get the exact angle you want. Now what I always do is I always hit, you can do this when you're not looking at an object too, is you hit B and you have rotate snap and that's perfect I always go to 45 degrees unless I need to be more specific like if it's a more like a little bit more of an angle of some sort I can change it but I usually default to 45 because that usually gets what I want and then I hit B to get out of there you can also do it while you're holding the object see as the object kinda moved back like let, let me move at a really funky angle so you can see that um, let's go like that. If I have it at 45 degrees, this is something you got to be careful on. Like, let's say you move something custom, like I just did with that piece, but you want it to be at that angle. Do not grab it when you have rotation snap on, because it will automatically move it, which is not always what you want. For me, it is though, because I want it to be at this angle. And you can fix that rotation snap while you're holding it. See how it's green with the fist down? That means you're holding it. Hit B, and there you go, rotation snap. And you can say 30 degrees, 15 degrees if it needs to be changed. So, you know, hey, I got the angle I want, and I'm moving it up. But I want it to be the exact kind of floor level as that. Now, you can do things to do it manually, you know, hitting up and down on the bumpers to go up and down left and right now that takes time and it's kind of annoying what I always do is let's do the bottom one first I grab the object hit B and there's edit coordinates here and I click that and as you saw it automatically moved down and that's because it moves objects between a point O decimal in the coordinate. So if you pretend once again that this is a huge graph, you can manually make something 1.0003 when you're manually slowly pushing it. But if you click here, it basically cuts off all those extra zeros and makes it a point O. And that's really nice when you're trying to get things the same height and all that. So you can, you know, you got width and then you got depth which is back and forth and then you got height and then you got the pitch and if you have the rotation snap on it moves it at 45 degrees if you're manually doing it it'll do it at a 0 0.01 degree for each movement now I used to do this too when I first started it was ingrained in me that to get out of a menu you hit B now that took two buttons to get out of and when I hit X or sorry, B again to get in. I gotta hit A to go back. And then I gotta go down to get to height, which is kind of annoying. Especially if I'm editing a lot of objects. A really 
nifty thing that I learned is if you hit X, when you hit B again, you're exactly not only in that section of the menu, but you're also on that section of the editor. So here I'm on height, let's go down, let's go to depth. Say I want to push this back, hit X, hit A to let go of that, then I grab onto this, and I hit B. I'm at depth again. Automatically I'm already there, I don't have to go to the menu, I don't have to say I want it to be edit coordinates and I want it to be down at depth or height or whatever I'm changing. I just have to hit B and I'm already there. So use that all the time. I use it all the time. Now there you go, you got, you got an object and we have another object and they're on top of each other, that's perfect. And we got the whole snap and editing and all that, but what if you want to make it manual? Well, you can grab it and you can move it, but you know, that's kind of fast. Even if you're slowly pushing on the stick, it's sometimes really fast. Now, one thing that I learned, if you hold down on the left stick, you can move slower. And another thing, if you're looking directly above it, the more above it you're looking, the slower it moves. So like here, I'm looking straight above it, I'm not pushing any of the buttons, and I go left and right. It's going a lot slower than if I'm looking here, and I'm pushing left and right. See, I was pushing at the same exact strength, this direction, while I'm up here. See, it's much slower. And you can combine those two things. You can combine the pushing down on the left stick and looking above, which I'm doing right now, and it will move really slowly. As you can see, I'm pushing my control, my stick, all the way to the left side. And it's moving really slowly. If I wasn't pushing down on the left hand stick or looking straight above it, that's what it would look like. So that's one thing you can do to move really slowly and precisely manually. And then, you know, you hit X and you're back right there. So what I sometimes do, like let's say I'm building a lot of objects. I'll go here and I'll let's put another ramp down. Let's put it right next to it. So I'm snapped, so I go to 45 degrees. And I kind of get it close. So I'm looking at it and I kind of have it close to where I want it to be. I want it to be touching this edge here. And I want it to be at the same height. So I get it close and then I hit B. And I grab this one and I, I want it to be over here. So I get it close using the left down stick and all that to move slower. And then I hit B. Now they're at the exact same height, but that causes problems. See this little texture glitch that happens? You can see it right there. That annoys me to no end. So a way to fix that is you grab whatever one you want in front. So I'm just going to say this right one I want in front. I look straight above it, and I hold down the left stick, and I move slowly out in front. So I slowly push down on the stick. And see, now I don't have that texture. Oh, I have a little bit up here. I'm just going to move it just slightly more. There we go. So now I don't have that texture glitch anymore at all. And if you look at it, you can barely even see that that thing is not the same height. And when you run across it, it doesn't bump or anything. I always do that whenever I have weird, funky texture glitches that annoy me. Sometimes if it's like on the roof way over there, it, I don't care. But if it's like right here in front of me on this ramp, I will slow I'll slowly manually move one piece out of the way. And nobody will ever tell the difference. Besides that there's a light over here and there's not over here, but you know, who cares? You're in the middle of a fight. You're getting shot at from the back and you're going to be like, "Oh my god. Oh, hey, wait. There's a light over here. Well, that's going to get you killed." <laughs> so things like that, it really doesn't matter. Now, you always 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 want to save 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 all the time save as new map and what I always do when I'm making a new map is I hit ZZ and whatever I want to call it and then I add the same name as the description ZZ will make it at the very bottom because it's alphabetical and so when you're done with your map Game and over. you go to look at your file share um, not your file share but your manual files you can just hit up and you're already where you need to be. See? Go to Forge World. Up. There you go. Z. 
So hope that helped, and I'll make the next tutorial when I'm free, and give me ideas on possible tutorials to make for you. Subscribe, comment, and I'll see you all later.